PC Doodles. Alrighty, so this is a new, I don't want to call it a series, because I call things series and then I don't continue through with them. <laughs> um, but I, I posted about this on Facebook earlier and basically what I want to do is start a um, beginner witches video series and basically have different topics that I talk about for um, people that are just starting or beginners or newbies or whatever you want to call yourself, um, but people that are just finding their way into witchcraft, um, Wicca, paganism, bundle it all together. Um, so there'll be different videos like um, the beginner guide to herbs and crystals and what I want to do is kind of give more advice um, so you know there there's a lot of people that are like hey I have these stones I don't know what to do with them or I see these people that collect all these stones or collect they have hundreds of different herbs but what do you do with them um, so you know I'd, I'd like to do different videos like that um, you know maybe saying a couple herbs that are good to have on hand plus how to utilize them in your practice. Um, same thing with crystals. And what I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to start the series out by giving you uh, advice. And this advice is going to be advice that I wish that I knew when I first started on my path in witchcraft. Um, so I have these written down to try to keep, the, keep me on task. Um, so these are the top 10 pieces of advice. There's plenty more. Plus, you know, if you think of any, please add it to the comments because I'm sure there's all kinds that I'm forgetting. Um, but these are things that I wish that I would have known that I think would have made me have a much easier time learning if I would have known these things. And these are in no particular order. They're not like the best to the least. It's just as I thought of them. So number one, don't buy something unless you have a need for it or know why you're buying it. Um, and this is really important because if you see my closet, I have, in, in my shelves, I have a plethora of things and a lot of it is stuff that I bought when I was first starting because I thought I had to have it. I read all these books that had all these different kind of tools and all these different kind of um, everything and I just, I thought I had to have it to be a witch. Um, you know, they told me what all these tools were for and blah, blah, blah. So I went out and I bought an athme and I bought, um, candle stuffers and I bought all kinds of different candles and, and, um, just, da all kinds of stuff. And now most of that stuff I don't use, like I don't even use an athme on my altar and I, I never even really felt connected with the athme. I just felt like I had to have it. Um, and a lot of that stuff is expensive if you go out and buy it. So, same thing with herbs and crystals. You know, there's a lot of people that really like collecting that kind of stuff, which is great. But if you're just starting out and you feel like you have to have something, really stop and ask yourself why you're buying it. Um, you know, so if you were to go out and you said, you know, hey, I really want um, that amethyst crystal uh, because my book said that amethyst is great for this, this, and this. Well, if you're going to buy the amethyst, what are you going to use it for? You know, is it something that you actually want to utilize in your practice? Is it something that you're buying because your book said that you should have one? Is it something, you know, really think about why you're buying something before you buy it? Because otherwise, Wicca can be, at witchcraft, um, can be very expensive. Uh, there's a lot of expensive stuff out there, and not that the stuff isn't cool, and that's kind of my part 1A, is <laughs> I understand that we all want to collect things, because we do. Um, you know, there are all these people out there, and I'm going to say the same thing that a lot of other people have said, and that is you don't need tools to practice witchcraft. Um, you know, you can do it all up here, you can do it with stuff that's around your house, but I'm going to be completely honest with you, a lot of people don't want to hear that. I know there's a lot of times I don't want to hear that. I'm like, well, I know that I can use birthday candles to cast the spell, but I really want, you know, this elaborate candle that I found at such and such a witchy shop that's blessed by so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, it really all depends on what's in here and in here that matters. So, you know, if you really feel called and drawn to that red candle that you found, fine. But if you're just buying it because you feel like you have a, you have to have a specific color, you have to have a specific something because a book told you to, 
just kind of think about that kind of stuff. You really don't need the tools. You don't need to spend the money. It's a spiritual practice. So just kind of watch what you're spending your money on. Uh, and that leads us into number two, which books are guides, not Bibles. Um, I have a plethora of books, most of which, well, a lot of which have not been read all the way through. Um, you know, I like buying books for guides. I like buying books, um, you know, to have different information available for when I need something. But really understand that because something is said in a book, it's not set in stone. It is a certain person's practice. Um, so you you just really want to understand especially when you're starting out there's so much information that you can get from so many different places and so many different sources and you just really need to kind of weed through it and not take everything to heart and realize that everything that's out there is a guide to help you find your right and true path um so take what you want leave the rest but understand that if a book tells you you have to do something, you don't have to do something. And that kind of leads me into number three, which number three is beware of the witchy gurus. And uh, this was something that um, Laura on my Facebook page had had termed the witchy gurus. And uh, that was basically people that... Uh, <sighs> They, you can find them anywhere. Sometimes they're in books. A lot of times they're on YouTube or on the internet. But basically they're people that think that they're hot shit and they know exactly what they're talking about. And if you're not doing what they say, you're doing it wrong. And, you know, they really try to uh, kind of get you in their clutches. And it's just a bad news bears. So if you come across somebody that tells you that if you don't do it the way that they're saying to do it, then you're wrong. Then you don't need that person. Uh, you don't need to follow that person and you probably shouldn't be because um, their compass is not its not exactly pointing in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? So beware of the witchy gurus. Now, witchy gurus, you know, there are a lot of people online, a lot of people, that just put out there what their thoughts are or how they do things. Um, you know, I have plenty of witchy videos and Tipto Chick has plenty of witchy videos and Flora does and uh, tons of people have videos like that, but none of them say, if you don't do it this way, you're doing it wrong. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's a lot of times that, I'll, that you know, when I'm doing a video, I'll preface it by saying, do what works for you. This is what works for me. Um, just kind of watch it. Number four, don't get ahead of yourself. Spend time learning. And make sure that when you're learning things, you're learning things that interest you because otherwise you're going to get bored and you're going to get burnout. Um, so, you know, don't worry about mastering every single kind of divination or, um, you know, every single kind of... There, There's so much information and you're going to be learning forever. That's what's wonderful about this path is there's never any boredom because there's always excuse me, something to learn. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do when I first started is I wanted to be a master in everything. I wanted to have every different kind of divination. I wanted to learn about all of them. I wanted to master all of them. I wanted to I just, and you know, I tried to get myself to learn tarot and I tried and I tried and I just didn't like it when I first started out. And so I kind of got burnt out um, trying to learn things that I thought I had to learn in order to be a witch. And you don't have to learn, hell, you don't have to learn any kind of divination if you don't want to. But make sure that you learn about things that interest you. So, you know, if you want to spend the next two years learning about herbs and their different properties, then go for it. You know, if you don't ever want to pick up a book on crystals and you just want to know what quartz and amethyst and rose quartz do, that's perfect. Don't feel like you have to be a walking encyclopedia. That stuff will come with time and sometime down the road, you know, maybe you'll want to learn about crystals. Maybe you'll want to learn about um, herbs down the road. Maybe down the road like I did. I finally picked up tarot. It took me uh, 14 years to care about tarot, but now I do. So don't beat yourself up if there's something that's in a book or on the internet um, that's related to witchcraft that you just really don't give a shit about because that's fine. You can take it or leave it. Um, number five, and this is a big one. Don't be an intellectual witch. 
practice what you read and learn. Now, obviously, when I say intellectual witch, you want to be smart about things. But what I'm saying is don't just read books and read the internet and watch YouTube videos and call it good. You really need to practice what it is that you're reading and what it is that you're learning because anybody can read a book. You know, just because I read Fifty Shades of Grey doesn't make me a dominatrix. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I mean, you really have to, just because you're reading a book on witchcraft doesn't make you a witch. You really have to practice what you preach and practice what you read and what you are learning that's the only way that's going to stick into your head and that's the only way that you're going to integrate it into your practice is to practice. Number six, don't focus on the right way. Focus on what's right for you. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Please understand that everything that you read and everything that you listen to and everybody that you talk to, it is all guide. It's all guides to help you on your path. Everybody's path is different everybody's is. Even though, you know, there may be a hundred different witches in a room, if you ask them all how they do something, there may be a hundred different answers, which is perfectly fine. Um, you know, now it's great when you're first starting out, if you know, you want to go buy a book because it's the only way that you really know, or you want to go buy how somebody says something. But, um, you know, let's say, like I had said before, you're casting your circle and it's just not feeling right to you because the elements don't seem right. So change them. Change the directions, change the elements, change the colors so that it works for you. Because I didn't like casting circles for years until I realized that I could change that to fit with what works for me. And once I did that, it made all the difference in the world and it really helped me connect with the elements. Um, so really make sure that you bring into your life what works for you and what you feel is right for you and leave out what's not. Okay? It's very, very important. Um, number seven, remember, free info is everywhere. Use it. So just because you don't have the money to buy books, to buy hundreds of books that are everywhere, the internet is free, uh, YouTube is free, and there is so much information that you can get just from that source right there, the internet. Um, now you want to be careful with the internet because there are a lot of witchy gurus that feel like they know everything and um, there are people that want you to pay to learn and there are people, you know, that's kind of, um, you know, there's a difference between paying, you know, for a course, like Tiptoe Chick has a course, um, Crystal Miss Canadian Witch has courses. I mean, there are people that actually put together really awesome, fabulous courses on different subjects, but if somebody's trying to get you to pay to be in like an online coven or to learn, um, you know, beginning with, like, just be careful on the internet goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, but utilize that free information. And also realize that, um, you know, a lot of people that are on YouTube, you know, you can send them messages, um, but a lot of people get sent the same messages all the time and so they won't respond. And you really have to understand that if they're not responding, it's probably a question that you can easily find out either on the internet or, um, the question, I'm new to witchcraft, help, uh, could be answered. It could take years to even answer that. So use free information because it's wonderful. Um, number eight, get out in nature. Um, you know, I a lot of people live in towns. They live in cities, and I get that. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, no book. No altar, no anything is going to replace getting outside and putting your feet in the grass and feeling the dirt and just being outside. Being a witch is all about nature and all about embracing nature. And so it really is important to get outside when you can and embrace that with just yourself. No tools, uh, you know, no, just you in nature. The true which is being outside with mama earth number nine write shit down 
Uh, I still have a really hard time with this, and I kick myself in the face for it, but, uh, and I'm running out of time here because my phone's about to be like, haha, no, you're done. Um, but make sure that whatever you do, a spell, um, some kind of meditation, if you try something new, write it all down, or type it out, or make a vlog, something, because down the road, you're going to think, hey, what did I do that one time that worked so well? And if you didn't write it down, you're SOL. <laughs> And my last one is pay attention, and this was from my hubby, pay attention to your gut or intuition. Nothing is too silly, okay? So if you're feeling not so right about something, if you're feeling right about something and it seems silly, understand that this is your path and nobody else's. So the fact that I have Toothless as the center of my protection altar, it felt right to me. It may be silly to other people, but follow those gut instincts and those gut hunches that you get because it's very important. So that was my advice for you guys. I gotta get going. I'll see you later. Bye!